Uh, very important day today, Sydney, and all around Australia, and you know what, across the globe. It's World Mental Health Day today, um, and we wanted to talk about uh, a special story that happened just under four years ago here in Sydney. It was on the 4th of December 2014, and a security guard on the Sydney Harbour Bridge noticed a heavily intoxicated man dangling by a piece of railing outside the safety fence. He was threatening to take his own life. Traffic was gridlocked for hours as he was eventually talked down out of jumping, but it was a very, very 50-50 situation whether he was going to go or not. That man's name was Dan Price. He lived to uh, tell his tale and he is here today for World Mental Health Day. Dan, thank you very much for coming in, buddy. Thanks for having me, guys. Dan, Good sensational to have you here. Um, can you take us back to that moment? What happened What happened that morning? Yeah, look, it... Um it was a pretty tough time for me, obviously, uh, going through a, a lot of challenging things in my life that uh, I hadn't shared. But on that morning, you know, it culminated in me feeling uh, so helpless and exhausted, um, you know, and a really broken human being, I guess. It had gone on for such a long period of time, um, which we can obviously talk about. But um, I just felt I had nothing left. Um, I knew the sun was coming up soon. I'd spent the morning... Uh, in my car yeah. I was so ashamed of, of feeling the way I was feeling I was still working yeah. in the city in a corporate job so I um, spent the night in my car telling my parents I'd moved home by that stage uh, off the back of a divorce yeah. Um, and yeah look cried myself um, to sleep most most nights yeah. and, and that morning um, I felt I just couldn't go on um, and felt sort of compelled to to exit the world because um, I didn't think there was anything here left for me. Mm. Um, did people around you know that you were going through this? Did you speak about your mental health? Did you speak about depression and, and, and or you, you kept it bottled up the whole time? Yeah, that's, uh, that's where the issue was for me. Um, I never spoke about any of the things that had gone on that were challenging in my life. Um, none of them were things that I couldn't have got through mm. by sharing. Uh, I didn't realise that at the time that, you know, bottling them up and, and doing the thing that a lot of men do, which is just put on a, a, a brave face, um, you know, it really broke me over time. So I told no one that I was struggling and I didn't mm. really understand what I was going through either, to be honest. I'd never really had much education in mental health yeah. um, and I hadn't really joined the dots. I knew I was having a tough time yep. um, and I knew things, you know, had gone on that were challenging but I thought it would blow over yeah. I just kept working hard kept training hard at the gym and then I was drinking too much and you know all the things that you shouldn't do yeah. um, but the biggest thing that I didn't do was was not talk yeah. to anyone about it Dan yeah. when you when you were on the bridge and there was a security guard speaking with you what was it that changed your mind yeah um, it was actually by that stage it was a police officer um, mm -hmm. His name's Aaron Trevitt and we're now really good mates actually. Um, so, you know, Aaron um, really saved my life that day and he, uh, when he got to the fence um, to talk to me through the fence, you know, he was just a bloke. Uh, mm. He wasn't a police officer. There was no judgment. Um, it was just pure empathy and care for my well-being. And he told me um, that a lot of people have gotten through what I'm, mm. what I'm you know, mm -hmm. facing right now. He's mm. like, look... We'll get you to safety. There's a lot of help out there for you. It doesn't matter what you're going through. Um, we can help you mm. get well. Mm. Um, obviously, knowing that in that situation, there's obviously been a lot go, go on in my life for me to be there um, without knowing the detail. And I believed him. Um, I guess that was the, the clincher that for the first time, I was really vulnerable and exposed. Um, and, you know, I was there to take my life. And so it was a very volatile situation and... Um, you know, just that lack of judgment and real care. Mm. Um, and he's a really good bloke. You know, he's just he's yep. just a, a great a great bloke. Um, I didn't feel like I was talking to a cop. Um, I felt like I was talking to a guy I'd known a long time. Yeah. And I think that's that's a skill that he obviously has and probably a lot of first mm. responders have mm. to really break through in those moments because, um, you know, yeah, I, it could have gone either way. And, Were you and, initially like, nah, I'm not going to listen to you. Nah, stay away yeah. from me. Were you like that first up, quite yeah. aggressive? or um, Not aggressive, no. but I, um, at first I tried to lie about it, actually. I, um, bizarrely, and I think this goes to show how, how mentally unwell I was, to think that being in that position, I could convince them that I was watching the sunrise. Are you kidding <laughs> oh, me? Wow. wow. Um, yeah. It's, um, a, it's a good view. Yeah. But, but it was not the one that you want to be. Side no, that's the right. Right. Yeah. Um, and... Yeah, look, it, um, it took a little while for, for him to connect with me and that's just because I was um, probably um, petrified that I'd been 
found out. It, yes. it wasn't the plan. The yep. plan wasn't to, you know, protest or anything like that. It was still dark when I went up there. Yeah. Um, and uh, and then it sort of flipped to um, once I wanted to be saved and I said to him, yeah, look, let's get me down. I don't want to be here. Mm-hmm. Um, it became um, pretty frantic because... Uh, I could have fallen at any moment. They were kind of holding me to the fence. Um, it was damn. really, it was really traumatic, and it took them another twenty, twenty-five minutes to work out how to get me down. They couldn't reach me because it was too unsafe of course. for the the um, you know the guys in the white overalls. The police rescue were there, and they couldn't get over, so I had to put a harness on myself. Fascinating how you got over the fence yeah. yourself, mate. Damn. Yeah, because you know with the bar, there's the razor edge and stuff there like that to get edge. over that fence. I climbed. Um, I, I actually climbed over. It's yeah, I don't even know how it happened. No. I climbed over at the rocks um, yep. and tightrope walked the railing. Far wow. out. Yeah. So, so you were just in it. Was it a relief? Uh, was it an instant relief, though, when you got over and you thought, this is it, okay, now everyone knows what state I'm in and now I can get help? Yeah, I, I did believe that um, I was going to get the help that I needed and I did ask Aaron that directly. I, I said to him, you know, are you sure I'm going to get help? And he's like, absolutely. Yep. You know? yep. And, um, you know, I did believe him. And uh, shortly after that, I was, you know, I was pretty, I was in shock, but not in a panic state. Um, I was read sort of my Mental Health Act rights mm. and, and put in an ambulance. Um, had no choice on, on that yep. matter, but it was either be arrested probably um, or, or, or down that road. And yep. obviously the police officers and ambulance spoke, yep. Yep. asked me a few questions and, um, you know, I explained that I'd been feeling like this for a while and um, they realised that it was, you know, it wasn't anything no, other than, no. yeah. um, you know, me, me being mentally unwell. And Dan, one of, the, yeah. one of the great dangers too with, you know, a silent illness is the fact that you have a look at yourself. Now, those listening can't see, you're a good-looking rooster, mm-hmm. you're dressed Thanks, well, you, but you, you have sort of a corporate look about yourself. You're not a guy that looks like, I mean, I know that would have, well, this was four years ago, but I would suggest you had a similar look at the time working a city job. You know, no one would have detected unless you spoke up that there was something as deep and as dangerous as this going on. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And I think it's a really important point and why I came to share my story is, you know, mental health and mental illness doesn't discriminate. We all know that. Um, But a lot of the world don't recognise that. Um, You just have to look at, you know... um, Robin Williams is a good yeah, example. Yeah. James Packer, you know, yep. richest man in Australia, and he's yeah. you know gone offline to to sort himself out mentally. And um, yeah, look from the outside looking in, um, I had it all at the time that this was all going on. You know, I um, I was still married when I was struggling through this. I had a great job mm. that I'd built up a good career in. I had a house, cars, and you know, and this is in in my mid to late twenties in Sydney. So I was doing, I was doing well, you know, I was fit, all that stuff, and none of it mattered. Yeah. Um, you know, I I kind of had ticked a lot of things off my list very yeah. early in life, and found myself in a place where I was still very discontent with myself and what was happening. Deeply unhappy. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it was one of those things that you couldn't see from the outside unless you probably really knew me. Uh, things did start to change. You know, I started. Um, it, being a little bit less social, mm-hmm. uh, started to struggle in, in social settings because I just wasn't feeling yep. myself. Um, you know, stopped going to the gym as much, things that were really me at, yep. at their core. Yep. Um, but, you know, life goes by so quickly for everyone. And unless someone was really watching me closely, mm. you probably wouldn't pick it up. No. And, you know, that's why it's so important, you know, to for me to share my story, to remind people that if we're a little bit more mm. aware of you know what's going on around us of our colleagues we can pick up those little things and um you know maybe say hey dan you know you haven't been at the gym for two weeks everything okay like it's a bit unlike you and you know dig a little bit deeper to try and work out what might be going going on on with someone dan tell us what happened three weeks ago Mm -hmm. um yeah sarah my partner and i uh, had our first child yeah amazing yeah so little tallulah wild um How, how long did you meet sarah after this incident uh, yeah, so Sarah and, and my relationship has been a pretty whirlwind whirlwind romance actually, mm-hmm. um, and it's it's quite beautiful because we came together through my story. Mutual friend shared it, uh, and she connected from that because she'd had her own experience. Yes, um, wow. And yeah, it was really beautiful. We were both in the US. She's an artist. She was doing some art, and I was doing a speaking tour last year a lot with the military over in the US. Yep. Uh, for mental health, and um, yeah, we actually couldn't catch it up 
in the US, but I was doing a talk in Copenhagen. So I said, mm-hmm. why don't you come and hang out with me in Copenhagen? We've been talking quite a bit, and which was very different for us. Neither, neither of us were sort of looking for a relationship. It was just a bit of um, friendly support over yeah. in the US, I guess, to chat at night and what have you. And um, yeah, we, uh, we had a great time in Copenhagen and went from there. And that was um, only a bit over a year ago. Great. Sensational yeah. news. What a story, mate. Yeah. Great story. So, so you're saying, all right, so Dan, just before we do go, because we know that there's a lot of people that deal with mental illness, but there's a lot of people that don't, right? So for us to yes. understand what's the best thing that we can do um, in these situations, it's World Mental Health Day today. Yep. If you have anything at all, it's just get on the front foot yourself and go and ask a friend if you think somebody's doing it tough. Yeah, I think so. I think that, you know, the way that we can shift this dynamic around mental health and how it's perceived, um, breaking down that stigma is um, recognising when you're not feeling great yourself mm. um, and knowing that there's a lot of help out there and knowing that it's just part of the human condition to struggle. Um, you know, life is stressful. Life is more fast-paced than ever now. Um, and for that reason, you know, we're probably more vulnerable and volatile to mental health struggles. Um but they're very easily fixed with a bit of talking. Yeah. Um, you know, maybe you see a psychologist or, mm-hmm. um, you know, I took medication for a period of time and it really helped me, but there's a lot of help out there. Um, and then the flip side of that is also being more aware of those around you, like I mentioned earlier. I think um, if you pick up on those early warning signs when someone's feeling like yeah. looking like they're a bit sad or yeah. just not themselves, they might be a really funny person. They're not cracking those jokes anymore. Like those those little parts of people's characteristics do drop away. Yeah. Um, you know, and... You know, if we're all sharing and being a little bit more open and vulnerable, um, I think it'll eradicate that stigma because it's really, there's no reason for it. It's so no, detrimental. No. It's, um, we're kind of past it now, I feel. You know, mm. The, mm. so much of the world knows what mental health is, but then people still feel like when they are struggling, like I did, yeah. that people were going to judge me. You yeah. know, I've never been judged for my story since I've shared it. No one's ever said, no. you're weak. Yeah, Why didn't right. you just pull yourself yeah, together, yeah, mate? Exactly. Like all those things that I thought were going to be said to me. And people yeah. were like, Dan, that's great. You're such a strong person for sharing your story, which, yeah. you know, um, well, I, I guess I Well, it's actually empowered am, you. You're now telling mm-hmm. your story all mm-hmm. around the world and on our radio show. And yeah. you know what I mean? Like, it's uh, you look confident now. You look great. You look healthy, Dan. It's, yeah. it's changed Thank your you. life. It, it has, you know, and I think my vulnerability and the things that I nearly lost my life to, mm. um, not only are they no longer anywhere on my radar, um, you know, life goes by and I don't even remember what some of the problems were. Mm-hmm. Um but my vulnerability has become my strength, absolutely, yeah. you know, and yeah. the, the things that I hid from, um, I now share um, wherever I go and, and people are inspired by it. And I think that's, you know, a really big message. If yeah. if someone's vulnerability and pain can bring hope to others, then yeah. I think that's a big sign 100%. that we should all be sharing a little bit more. Well said, Well, it's mate. the yeah, 10th well of October today. It's the World Mental Health Day. If you want more information, go to 1010.org.au to help create change, share a mental health promise and raise awareness. We really appreciate you coming in, mate, and congratulations on the little one. Thank you very much. Cheers, guys. Thanks, Dan. Wonderful. No.